Tyler the Creator is one of the biggest artists in recent years. He's selling out arenas, he's won two Grammys, and he has a die-hard fan base. But what's strange about this is that Tyler the Creator has also had one of the most controversial careers in recent history. From saying homophobic slurs and obscene things about Selena Gomez, to being banned for multiple countries and spray painting swastikas. It's surprising that Tyler has managed to maintain his success without being cancelled. But for one reason, and one reason alone, Tyler the Creator was able to push through the controversy. Also, real quick, my name is Matty Bowles, and if you guys like music or music-related content, make sure to subscribe down below, because I'm going to be posting a video every single Sunday at 12 p.m. CST this year, so uh, make sure to stick around. The Odd Future have made it in 2021. You guys talk so oh, fuck fuck crazy. No. You guys oh, have never no. But we we came at the right time where the like the last moment. Yeah, yeah. You could yeah. still be crazy. You could still be you could still be a kid and fuck up. Tyler the Creator has been in controversy ever since he began his career as an artist. Him and his friends created the collective Odd Future in 2007, and they were just as rebellious as any teenager at the time. The only difference is, instead of saying crazy shit to their friends in someone's living room, they were saying it on the internet. How you doing? I'm doing good. How's your life? Not only were him and his friends posting videos of them messing around on YouTube, they were also releasing their music. In 2008, they released the Odd Future tape, and on the intro track, Tyler made it clear how he was coming into the game. Right out of the gate, Tyler came in swinging with offensive words and a you attitude. Of course, a handful of the things he said in 2008 weren't as offensive as they are now, but they still didn't sit right with a lot of people. Regardless, Tyler doubled down on the controversy in 2009 when he released his debut album, Bastard. On this album, he was saying the F slur, talking about rape, and dissing tons of people. The song Sarah was particularly dark, so dark I don't even think I can discuss it, but I'll let you use your imagination. There was also the issue at the time of blogs refusing to post about Odd Future in their music, which really upset Tyler. He sent his music to the blogs, but they didn't want to report on it. So on the intro track to Bastard, he said, Fuck two dope boys and fuck not nah right. And any other blog that can't put an 18-year-old making his own fucking beats, covers, videos, and all that shit. This rebellious energy is what had so many of his young fans rallying to him in his early career. But it also had many people rallying against him. Tyler said a handful of things on Bastard that would come back to bite him. Regardless, the underground success of Bastard led to a bidding war between labels, and he eventually signed to XL. Under XL, he released his debut commercial album Goblin in 2011. The lead single from this album, Yonkers, absolutely blew up, which was both a blessing and a curse. On one hand, it brought him a lot of new fans, but on the other hand, it also brought many fresh eyes to his dark lyrics and crazy behavior. On Yonkers in particular, Tyler said, What you think of Haley Williams? F her. Wolf Haley robbing them. I'll crash that f airplane that that f Bob is in. I can't even say the words. <laughs> and stab Bruno Mars in his damn esophagus. These disses obviously upset the artists, along with some fans. And when asked about these lines, Tyler doubled down, saying he hates all of their music. Not only was Yonkers edgy, but the entire rest of Goblin was much worse. Apparently, he used anti-gay slurs 218 times on Goblin, and brought up murder, cannibalism, and necrophilia. This led to a ton of backlash in the media, with articles about him being a terrible person popping up left, right, and center. This is why articles and blogs and people hating on him in general was such a big subject matter in his early music. But it was also this media backlash that led to other angsty teens rallying to his side. You know, everybody thinks about dark shit. Why when somebody finally says it, it's such a big deal, you know? People are, all he talks about is have you seen Quentin Tarantino's movie? Why does everyone get their dick cut off or some Like, you know what I'm saying? Why nobody say nothing about that? It's art. Why when a black kid says that it's such a big deal? Like, really? It's art. Listen to the story. I'm not just talking about a bitch. It's a storyline. I'm writing this song from the mind of some serial killer from 30 years ago who was a white male. Like, really? Tyler refused to apologize. He stuck his middle finger up to all of those that disagreed with him and kept pushing forward. But there were still more roadblocks ahead. 2011 was a wild year for Tyler. People were trying to take him down just as fast as he was blowing up. Odd Future was scheduled to perform at the Big Day Out Festival in New Zealand, 
until they found out they weren't allowed to perform because an activist group didn't like their misogynistic and homophobic lyrics. He also had the artist Tegan and Sarah saying that he has no excuse for his homophobic slurs, to which he responded in this tweet. Tyler had many wild tweets at the time, like this series of tweets directed at Selena Gomez, which many people were extremely upset about. He even had one tweet that was in reference to his song Radicals saying, R.I.P. Dylan and Eric. Those people were probably cool as fuck. No one took the time to see. This was a reference to the two people who were responsible for the Columbine shooting. People were extremely upset about this, so he clarified in an interview, if Columbine is reenacted or some shit, that's gonna be on my fucking head. Yeah, it'll be my fault, just like it was M's and Maryland's and fucking Slipknot's and all them mother During Pitchfork's music festival, a bunch of domestic violence and victim advocacy organizations showed up to protest Tyler and the rest of Odd Future, who were performing at the festival. In response to this on stage, Tyler said, I dedicate this beautiful song to every person who don't like me, to every protester supposedly here, to every organization, everyone who's writing a review, I want you to suck my dick. To everyone else, you should go f***ing crazy. After he said that, he played the song Radicals, a song in which the chorus repeats, kill people, burn sh school. Tyler and the rest of Odd Future were causing mayhem. He had his first press run and would go to interviews talking about how much he hates interviews and diss the interviewers to their face, a thing that most artists at the time would never do during a press run. Generally, it seems that violence is fascinating for people. Why is that? Do I look like some psychiatrist or some what kind of question? Like, why the would I know? Dumbass. These questions are actually stupid. Okay, now what about your lyrics? What about them? What are you saying in your lyrics? Nothing. to piss old white people off like you. Is that right? <laughs> my lyrics aren't a... I don't know. I'm sorry if I keep talking. My lyrics aren't offensive. Aren't they? <laughs> no. Some people find them offensive, don't they? Yeah, heard that some before. people find everything offensive. Okay. Tyler and Odd Future really emulated that punk rock energy, which helped a lot of their fellow rebellious teen fans relate to them. I mean, they were even good friends with the punk rock band Trash Talk, did shows with them, and eventually signed them in 2012, so Odd Future and punk rock fans were actually heavily intertwined. Other than the successful release of his album Wolf, 2013 wasn't a year short of controversy either. By this time, Tyler was fairly successful, successful enough to be picked to direct a series of ads for Mountain Dew. He directed three ads for the company, with the main character being a goat named Felicia, which was voiced by Tyler, with his friends playing many of the other roles. Regardless, Tyler's ads with Mountain Dew were deemed offensive, so offensive that they were pulled. Critics call the online commercial for Mountain Dew racist, so Pepsi has pulled the ad, and ABC's Lindsay Davis is here with more on the provocative marketing campaign that pushed the envelope too far. Most people took issue with the third ad, where after a Mountain Dew loving goat got pulled over for a Dew UI and arrested for attacking a lady, he was in a police lineup with a bunch of black guys. Felicia the goat was also saying some crazy stuff to the lady, which sent many people into a fit of rage over the alleged misogyny and racism. A professor from Syracuse claimed that it was arguably the most racist commercial in history. Tyler responded to this comment by saying, one, all of those dudes in the lineup are my friends. Two, they're all in their own clothes. Three, no commenters saw that commercial and said, this is racist. Everyone either said, wow, this is ridiculous. It's a goat talking. Or they said, wow, this is the dumbest. Why would they even make this? He continued on talking about not only how he wasn't portraying stereotypes, but how he was breaking them with the ad. Regardless, this was just another controversy to add to Tyler's track record. It's hard to describe just how controversial Tyler was if you weren't around at the time. But why was Tyler the creator so edgy? Why was he so rebellious? Why did he have this f you attitude? Well, there was actually an understandable reason for that. Also, I've seen Tyler live twice, and I think he's an amazing performer. So that's why today's video is sponsored by SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app with over 70,000 events, including concerts, sports, festivals, and more. Like I said, I've seen Tyler live twice and he's one of the best performers I've ever seen. He really puts on a great show at his concerts and I highly recommend checking out SeatGeek during his next tour. Also, Drake, Drake is on tour too. So it's worth checking out SeatGeek so you can see Fat D live. It's like a triple entendre right there. That's great. SeatGeek puts all the tickets across the internet in one place to make sure you're getting the best deal. Their tickets are rated on a scale of 1 through 10, with the green dots having the best deals. Also, you get a buyer guarantee. Tea. 
and SeatGeek is the only website that lets you return your tickets ahead of the event with swaps. So you already know that I came through for you guys, and you can use my code MattyB for $20 off on SeatGeek. That is $20 off your first purchase with code MattyB. Make sure to click the link down in the description so you can download the app. Now let's get back to the video. Tyler's rebellious energy has always been a part of his character, even since he was a kid, and he makes it pretty clear why. My whole life I felt like a stepchild uh, in school, uh, at home, and especially in music and rap where, where I uh, have a profession. Tyler was always the odd one out and wasn't into the same things that everyone else was into. He was super into music, a music nerd if you will, alongside other things like skating, instead of the regular things like being into sports or whatever else was popular at the time. He also said that his interests led to him not fitting in with many other people growing up. I changed, yeah, I changed schools every year. I didn't have many friends, like close ones. Well, I was always the, uh, the odd one out. My, my friend Earl said this in a song, but I was too white for the black kids and I was too black for the white kids. So I kind of didn't really fit much into a, um, into a, you know, a, a certain spot. Him and the rest of Odd Future were a bunch of outcasts who rather than trying to fit in, decided to flip off the world and do their own thing. Tyler was also heavily influenced by Eminem, who had a very similar launch to his career, coming out, dissing everybody, not holding back and speaking his mind. But even as Tyler blew up as an artist, he still had this feeling of not fitting in. He said in 2013, even if I'm at the Grammy Awards, I feel like I'm an outsider. I can't explain how it is. I'm not lonely, I just don't have anyone to relate to. Especially since he was younger when he was coming out, it makes sense that he had this rebellious, angsty teen type of attitude. Regardless of his reasoning for being so rebellious, it would come back to bite him as he got older. In 2014, Tyler and the rest of Odd Future were slated to play at Rapture Festival supporting Eminem in New Zealand, but Tyler and five others were denied visas. It turns out that Tyler was banned from New Zealand because he was deemed a potential threat to public order and the public interest for several reasons, including incidents at past performances where they have incited violence. Apparently, they heard about an incident in 2011 when OF members allegedly incited fans to attack police, which is most definitely an exaggeration. Tyler tweeted, OF is banned from New Zealand again. They said we were terrorist threats and bad for the society or whatever. You may notice he said again, and that's because although they weren't technically banned, they were taken off a festival in 2011 because of an activist group. After being banned from an entire country, Tyler and his crew had one of their biggest tastes of what their controversial actions could cause, although they did think it was pretty cool. And not only was he banned from a country, but he was also arrested shortly after for starting a riot. Austin police have busted a rapper performing at a South by Southwest venue for inciting a crowd into a mob. Here's video from APD. Their arrest warrant for Tyler Okunma, known as also Tyler the Creator, says he was performing Thursday at the Scoot Inn on East 4th. Detectives for Code Ordinance say the venue was at its 999 person capacity. And the rapper yelled for folks to bust through the gates. At a show at South by Southwest, Tyler encouraged fans that had been locked out due to capacity being reached to come on in, and a bunch of people flooded into the venue. The police said, regardless of the size of a crowd, the encouragement of unruly and unlawful behavior is against the law and cannot be tolerated. A bunch of kids came in, no one got hurt. Like, no one got hurt. No everyone, property. I made sure in. everyone was chill, we good, everyone in, everyone safe, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. We finished the show, everyone had a great time, whatever. I'm done with the show, I go to the back. Yo, Tyler, the show was cool, heck yeah, dude. All right, you guys wanna go skate, let's go get food, whatever. I go to the airport two days later, and cops show up like, hey, come here, and put me in handcuffs, and I'm like oblivious to like, like, why am I? <laughs> <laughs> of course, though, this incident did spawn his iconic mugshot. There was another big controversy in 2015 when Tyler was also banned from the UK. Tyler was on his way to the UK to perform in a few festivals and was turned away at the border after being told he was banned from entering Britain for the next three to five years. The British government cited lyrics from Bastard and Goblin and songs like VCR, Blow, Sarah, Troncat, and French. They claimed he was glamorizing the behavior that he mentioned in these two albums, such as rape, murder, and physical abuse. They said that these were behaviors unacceptable in the UK. Tyler said, everyone is a follower, just following what other countries are doing. Now I'm getting treated like a terrorist. I'm bummed out because it's like, dude, I'm not homophobic. I've said this since the beginning. He went on to explain that he wrote these songs from different people's perspectives and that he wasn't actually promoting this stuff. Around this time, there was also a boycott that happened in Australia 
when a feminist group protested him doing a tour out there, which allegedly slowed down his visa approval. Tyler canceled his tour there and said, we would much rather come to Australia when it isn't surrounded in controversy. His controversial lyrics were catching up to him, even at a time when he was much less controversial. Sure, he was dissing a bunch of artists on Cherry Bomb at the time, but his lyrics and overall attitude were much more tame than they were back in 2011. After hearing about all of the crazy stuff Tyler did in his early career, it's surprising that he still even has a career today. Many artists get canned for saying and doing a whole lot less terrible things than Tyler may have done. So, how did Tyler get away with it? They got me out of here. 2011 like what if they got me out of here in mm. 2011 and, that and wouldn't allow me to get right here after 2015 and the release of his album Cherry Bomb, Tyler can be seen getting into a lot less controversy. Aside from a few issues here and there, he has been much more tame than he ever was. Regardless, in 2017, Tyler released his album Flower Boy, which many fans loved because of his departure from edgier, more aggressive music and his new approach to more melodic and introspective music. Tyler dove into many topics like love, friendship, depression, and even sexuality. Fans had speculated his sexuality and many assumed he was joking about being gay, but the song Garden Shed in particular really hinted at his true sexuality. He doesn't discuss it much, but because many people assumed he was gay or bisexual, it did seem to soften the blow of some of his earlier obscenities. And while that doesn't magically erase his track record, I'm sure it helped a little. Yeah, uh, some critics have said this is the maturing of Tyler the creator. Are you growing I, up finally, Tyler? Probably, but it's more so that I didn't, I just wanted to produce and just have people sing, and that's all I want to listen to, so... I kind of didn't want to rap a lot on it, so I kept all my rap verses short, and everything I said, I made sure it was really ridiculously important. A writer for GQ sums up this transitionary period very well by saying, Flower Boy shows us a rapper slowly maturing into adulthood, casting off the childish and repugnant actions of his past in an attempt to better discover himself. Tyler may not have earned forgiveness for his past, which he will rightfully continue to be judged by, but Flower Boy is the first time he's earned the right to penance. Also, if you don't know what penance means, look, like, me i didn't either i just googled it it means like repentance kind of and even though previous people were still judging him flower boy was tyler's most successful album at the time and brought him a ton of new fans many of whom had no idea about how crazy tyler used to be it's even a meme in his community that newer fans would be shocked to hear an album like bastard come from the same guy who made flower boy and the same guy who would go on to make igor which also brought him even more of these new fans. Another factor that helped prevent him from being cancelled in particular was the fact that cancel culture wasn't the same back when him and Odd Future were coming out. Would, would Odd Future have made it in 2021? You guys talk so oh, crazy. Fuck no. You guys oh, would never make it. No. For we, we came at the right time where the like- The last moment. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You could still be crazy. You could still be, you could still be a kid and up. The whole idea of cancel culture was not a thing back then. And despite Tyler being banned from countries and having ads pulled by Mountain Dew, he hadn't been deplatformed or anything like that, which definitely could have been possible today. Like Tyler said, him and the rest of Odd Future came in at the perfect time. I think it's also important to note that cancel culture hasn't usually been very successful, so long as the people they're canceling have a strong enough fan base and are willing to push forward. I think Anthony Fantano put it best when he said, New cancel culture has miserably failed at its goal of canceling most of the people that it tries to cancel, so even if Tyler did end up being canceled, he most likely would have continued and would still be where he is today. But it isn't Tyler's sexuality that saved his career. It isn't the lack of cancel culture or deplatforming that saved his career either. The biggest reason that Tyler the Creator still has a career today is because he is unapologetically himself. Despite being kicked off the basketball court, despite being kicked out of the band, despite being banned from multiple countries and protested at his shows, Tyler stuck to his guns. But when all that happened, I said, fuck him. I didn't let none of that shit stop me from doing anything that I wanted to do. Tyler's growth and thoughts on his past culminated on the song Manifesto from his album Call Me If You Get Lost in 2021. In this song, Tyler addresses his controversial past in the most Tyler the Creator way possible. He acknowledges his wrongdoings, but doesn't make excuses. He embraces who he was and points towards his evolution, like how he apologized to Selena Gomez for his inappropriate tweets when he met her in person, rather than doing some big public apology. He then encourages his listeners 
listeners to be themselves, something he has done throughout his entire career in both songs and interviews. Not only is Tyler the Creator unapologetically himself, but he also encourages others to do so as well. Not only does he encourage them to do it, but he inspires them too. One fan wrote, Tyler made me feel more comfortable as a black dude to be myself. Growing up, I thought I had to have this street image, speak a certain way, behave a certain way, only have cool interests, etc. His art has taught me that you can be a weirdo and still be cool in your own personal way. Tyler never stopped being rebellious. He was always the same person. He just matured and evolved as both a person and a musician. He continued doing what he wanted, how he wanted it and eventually people began to appreciate that. One thing about Odd Future is that they were one of the first internet collectives, and Tyler the Creator has lived most of his life for the past 15 or so years on the internet. People have seen him go through multiple stages of his life. It's almost as if fans have grown with him, seeing him mature in real time. And if they've taken away any lesson from Tyler the Creator, it's probably that it's just best to be yourself.